My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to RimWorld. And for the first time in a while, we are on the main game loading screen. Now, those of you who have seen the last episode, which you can access by clicking the little card thing in the top corner of the screen there, will be well aware that things ended pretty poorly for our last venture. We had Cobra, Iron Man Ma and... A N other whose name was it Grump? I think it was Grump. Yes, we had three colonists out on the ice sheet, and we were doing pretty well. You know, a few setbacks here and there, but then we got absolutely mullered by an infestation. The infestation also decided to dig into an ancient danger beside our base and release a load of mechanoids. Now, between them, they conspired to completely wipe out our colony. I did toy with the idea of leaving that map open and seeing if we'd have a new colonist join through a random event. Now, I may still do that. I'm not going to delete the save file, so I can always go back to it. However, for now, uh, the so far, sorry, the consensus so far is to let's try something a little bit different. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and set up a new colony. We're going to use the same starting scenario as last time, mainly for the uh, for the tribal start that it gives you, plus the, the naked start as well always adds a, an extra element of difficulty, which is always nice to play with. Um, obviously, if you read this, it tends to tend towards a cannibalistic playthrough that won't be the case so this filler text here we can pretty much disregard it i'm just using this for the starting conditions and nothing else not a a build up for the law or anything like that so once again we're going to go for randy random and losing is fun we'll stick to reload any time although as we saw in the last series we're not going to save scum. For example, I do think there is an autosave, or there was an autosave. There won't be for much longer once it, once it gets overwritten. There would have been an autosave where we could have reloaded before the infestation spawned, but that's against the spirit of it all, if you ask me. And it doesn't do to just reload every time you f face some sort of difficulty, even if it does spell disaster. So, yeah. Let's move onwards. So for our map, we want 100% coverage once again. And once again, we're going to activate all of the various tribe types and uh, what are the, I can't even think, factions, that's it, faction types. And we shall hit randomize seed for no other reason and then I want to. And we'll do it three times and see what we land on. Raincoat. Well, that could be quite fitting. If you did see the last episode, you may be aware that we're going into the rainforest. But of course, it's not just going to be any old rainforest. We are going into the Ferenisk jungle. So let's set up our filters here so we can find a, a decent enough starting tile. So we want Ferenisk infested jungle. As we can see, this is a very hostile biome. Do not start your base here unless you know very well what you're doing. Well, that's questionable, but we'll give it a go anyway. Terrain, uh, we'll leave that as any. In fact, no, we can't because a large rock, we need to at least select a terrain. I'm gonna go for mountainous again. That might sound a bit odd considering what happened last time, but my logic here is I do have the mod where infestations won't spawn in a well-lit room. And if we're in the jungle, we're gonna have an abundance of wood to keep torches lit so that should keep the infestations at bay the other reason i'm going for mountainous is it tends to lend towards more natural resources appearing on your map that is going to be critical for this playthrough especially in and around our own compound or base simply because wandering out into the jungle to go and harvest or mine up some ore or whatever it might be just is gonna be very very difficult because of the huge amount of spiders that exist on the map once the local fauna has been consumed by the feralisks 
they will start then hunting colonists and they are very aggressive and very dangerous so we really don't want to be heading out of our compound so if we can have a mountainous base again that should give us plenty of resources to work with so it's making it a little bit easier but overall it's still going to be quite difficult i think so once again we're going to go for granite as one of the rock types we also want marble and as for the other one i'm not too concerned we'll just have two if that's all it gives us if there's a third one then so be it but i'm not really fussed about what it's going to be so let's see what this brings back so there are three tiles that meet this criteria on the map now it's a case of hunting them down because those arrows don't work anymore for some reason so we just need to carefully look through and see if we can spot the flashing tiles now that's alpine meadow i know that the the feralish jungle tile is a dark green sort of color on the map so that's what we're looking for here of course we can also just look for the pulsing strobing highlight tile that meets our criteria as per the filter we set up let's have a look still can't see one of them hopefully this doesn't take all day if it does take much longer i'll just put a cut in probably at this point and then pick it back up once i do locate the feralish jungle but we shall see how we get on oh is that saying there's zero of those tiles perhaps it is let's bring up the filter screen once again let's char change charge change to large hills and then we can minimize that oh no it would have been three out of three okay let's go where is our feralish jungle let's zoom in a little bit oh here we go look so here's the tile it's recommending that meets our criteria here as we can see are the mountainous ones see this one would work this one has marble sandstone and granite there are caves we are quite close to a well three very hostile factions and there are no friendly factions around as well there's this one down here and this outlander faction here however striking up a trade caravan and leaving them up is going to be very difficult because of the feralisks anyway so let's go for it i suppose what do we have what do we have here actually slate marble and granite not bad mountainous and a river decent temperature and year-round growing period we've got caves and a river as well you know what i think we're gonna go for this one we'll go for this tile have i selected yes there it is look we'll go for this tile here again we're surrounded on all sides by hostile factions so that should be interesting so let's go ahead increase the map size start in spring it makes no difference what year round growth availability anyway and the temperatures are very manageable so we'll start in spring and then we'll move on to our ideology screen so let's let's create okay ladies and gentlemen so here's the ideology uh, that we've gone for we've gone for a fluid one once again the undivided collective because why not uh, we've gone for the collectivist meme in terms of precepts the only things that really stand out are slavery is honorable uh, torture is acceptable cannibalism this time around is abhorrent there's no need for it or there shouldn't be any need for it if things go well nothing else on there is really worth mentioning here's our two religious roles the high chief and the elder our rituals are the harmony interment the festival of animism and the fiesta of family buildings we have a nail sheet an animus logo and a grand sculpture and for our relics we have the annie amulet the annie statuette and a very clear nod to lord of the rings there a broken sword named narsil everything else is much of a muchness so let's crack on to our character selection screen now okay now obviously last time around cobra was 
tailor-made for the ice sheet. There's no need to do that this time. So what we're going to do, we should have a look through here and see if anybody stands out as being somebody we'd like to... Ooh, jogger, that's always a good trait to have. So look at their skills, decent shooting, and artistic's not bad. Nothing in intellectual, which is a bit annoying. But the decent plant skill is quite nice. Let's just keep looking through. Uh, what do we have here? No. No. Ooh. Incapable of social skills, which is a bit of a problem. But the great memory obviously is going to help us not lose the skills we've mastered. And the super immune is going to be fantastic for the jungle. Toxos Trobaugal. Well, first of all, we need to give them a name that is a bit of a nod to our previous playthrough. So obviously the starting colonists last time around was the very well known and loved Cobra. We're not just going to put Cobra again. This is a nod to him, not a direct copy of him. So instead, we shall go for Python. If I could spell it correctly. Still can't spell it correctly. There we go. Python. Yes. And then, what we also want to do... Where have you gone, Python? Where are you? There you are. I think we'll give him a... We'll give him an insect tattoo. Again, a bit of a nod to what happened last time around. Yes. Hair. Mm. For his hair, we should just go for... Oh, no, not that one. Snazzy. Let's have a look here. You can have a battle knot. No beard. There we go. And you have... You have the spider tattoo on your head, which is quite interesting, considering our starting biome. So, there we go, yes. We're not going to change anything else about him. I should keep him as generated, just his appearance and his name somewhat. So, let's, let's close that. Where have you gone? So, take him up to the top, so we definitely take him with us. Uh, yeah, capable of social, which does mean we can't do any wardening and that sort of thing, but that's fine. Everything else I'm pretty happy with. The two traits are brilliant. So, let's get started. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here we are deep in the jungle, spawn next to two jungleisks, which is always fantastic. Let's just have a look at the wildlife tab, shall we? Where is it? So we've got the two jungleisks there, and um, well, no, they're, they're insects, aren't they, as well we know from last time around. Do you know what? For a feralisk infested jungle, there ain't many feralisks on here. There's two. I'm sure more will speed speed spawn in a little bit later. Obviously, we do have a few other things that we need to keep a close eye on. This jaguar could well start hunting us. Uh, what else do we have? Anything? In fact, where we have spawned looks like a pretty nice place for starting a base. There's only one entryway into here, if we ignore the river for the time being, that is, of course, and this entry point here. But yes, we only have one way in, which could be easily defensible. This could be handled, as could this. We have our backs to an open cave network here, but if we steer clear of that, that shouldn't be a problem. This is also an entry point onto the map as well, which we'd have to wall off. Yeah, we'd also have we also got this secondary fallback position here, which we could wall off through this narrow channel. I think we've started in a pretty nice location there. 
a bit of marshland around which does make constructing a little bit more challenging and you have to be a bit careful and a bit clever with with your building layouts but that's fine it just gives us something to bear in mind we don't want it too easy after all so yeah good place to start so let's get our recurve bow equipped and then what we'll do is I think we'll first of all make our start in this area here it's quite defensible we could handle these caves and these rivers and then we just have this as our focal point in and out of the base we have this webbed marshy soil which will slow us down massively but we could also use that to our advantage for any encroaching raiders and the likes and we also have a very large mountainous area to work with in terms of making our initial base so the first thing we want to do then is we want to get this walled off the quicker we can protect ourselves from the spiders the better obviously there's only two of them i was hoping there'd be more but there you go so let's get some of this mined down i say mined i mean chopped so let's chop some trees go for those three there python what are you doing yep you're going straight to harvest the trees which is great that's what we want you to be doing there We've got some ores nearby as well, which eventually we'll be able to mine out in relative safety once we're walled off. Let's get these these trees shot to get some wood gathered up. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is wall this off. Now, we didn't get a lot of wood there. Maybe it's not a bad idea just to chop a few more trees down just to make sure we have enough wood to get our initial fortifications put in place there we go let's quickly pause it okay so structure wooden wall yeah we're not going to have enough here but basically what we want is something like that with a door entry point so let's build as much as we can obviously unlike our friend cobra he isn't a master builder so there are going to be a few botched attempts which is fine we need more wood let's get some more chopped down then what are we? yeah let's just go nuts hell is that? Acanthamoeba gigantea. Oh. Is that dangerous? Let's have a look here. No. Not dangerous at all, but it doesn't drop any meat or leathers, so we don't need to prioritise harvesting that. So, we'll just let it wander on through. Okay, so Python's going to chop down the rest of the trees. The initial wall is now constructed. So, we if we can manage this area here, we should be in a decent enough position. Let's get ourselves a stockpile zone. Where do we want to put our initial base? I'll say we just dig into this section here. So let's dump, put our stockpile zone just outside where the base is going to be. Oh, we have a, a scorpion, okay be mindful of that but for now let's get this wood hauled over it shouldn't hunt us at this point but we are going to want to take care of that pretty quickly let's have a look at its stats 3.75 cells per second quite a high market value but we're not going to try and tame it and sell it absolutely not uh, da -da -da -da. it's got a gunshot injury to its eye interestingly okay Right, let's re-equip our bow. Yes, we did. Let's get that thing taken care of before it turns its attention to us. Now, I do think we do outpace this. 
Uh, yes, we do. So we can kite around relatively safely. Obviously, the poor shooting skills harming us here. Let's have a look at this now. 3.68 and its health. And we've cracked its shell twice. This is going to be a tough, long fight. So I'll probably just put it. <laughs> okay, no, it's not. What happened there? We must have got a very lucky shot on that thing there. Let's have a look. Health. Straight headshot, straight through the brain. What a shot, Python. Well done, well done. So that's that taken care of. We're not going to worry about butchering it. We don't want to be consuming that sort of meat. Now, as discussed, we've also got this cave network here. That backs onto an entry point to the map where raids could spawn in from. So I think what we'll do here is put a couple of walls in here, here and here. We should have enough wood left over for that. So let's get that done. So that's that way, that way and that way blocked off. Now you can't put a wall across the bridge, obviously. A wall across the bridge, so you can't put a wall across the river, so we're just going to have to be mindful about that. If anyone has any ideas of how to defend or block off a river, then let me know. Python, you need something to eat. Right, do we have any herbs and the likes growing around here? Well, we have some bananas. And it is ready to harvest, so let's harvest the banana tree. Get you something to eat. And there we go. Right, now let's start working on where you're going to sleep for the first night. And as discussed, it's just going to be straight into the mountain here. So let's, in fact, first of all, let's get a growing zone put down. Only needs to be small-ish. Doesn't need to be anything too large. I think five by three, and we'll go for two five by three zones. In the first one, we shall grow rice for its quick growth speed. And in the second one, we shall stick to potatoes for the higher yield. So, where are we going? First of all, haul the bananas back and then get working on these growth zones. And in fact, what we'll do now is just take a quick run through your priorities here. So, growing, so sowing the plants, putting the plants mining and constructing they all want to be relatively high as does research everything else we can take care of manually so let's where are you going oh you're working on these wooden walls that's fair enough construction is set as high priority so i think you should be relatively safe for the first couple of nights even if you're sleeping outdoors Yes, the animals can path round all of this, but we shall see. Having this water source is also very nice for washing and the likes. And we can also use it for power generation a little bit later on. What's going off on the map? Just lots of things skittering around. No new spiders have wandered, 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 wandered on yet though. So, yes, Python, you get those walls put together. Or, you know, fall asleep, whatever. There we go. Can you go through? No, you can't. Okay. Okay, go to sleep. Yes, you're sleeping on the floor. It's not nice, but we'll get that sorted pretty soon, hopefully. So there is our first night in the jungle, now underway. It's been plain sailing so far. Obviously we had to deal with a scorpion that was spawned in our chosen starting area. That's no problem, we dealt with it 
pretty, a lot quicker than I thought it was, thanks to a very lucky headshot from Python right at the end there. And I think we'll... I know it's only been a short episode in terms of gameplay on the map, but we'll probably draw a conclusion to this one here now. I hope you're looking forward to this jungle series. I'm certainly looking forward to it. It's going to have different challenges to the ice sheet. Obviously, one of the things we are going to have to be mindful of is the fact that we can't just dump corpses anywhere and freeze their meat in the ambient temperatures. So stockpile management for our food is going to be a lot more critical out here. Uh, obviously, as discussed, uh, the high numbers of feralisks, although I say high, we only have two at the moment, but I'm sure that will change. But yes, the high number of feralisks will make starting trade caravans quite difficult because as soon as we enter, sorry, exit our compound, we'll likely become a target of the feralisks in the future. That also applies for caravans that wander onto our map. They can find themselves in great danger as well. So yes, as I said, we'll we'll leave it there now. I hope you're looking forward to the series. I certainly am. As discussed, I'm going to keep the save file for the Ice Sheet series. And, you know, I might even run both side by side. What I will definitely do, however, off camera is I'll run that one forward until a new colonist joins and if they look like somebody I think it would be interesting to continue the series with then I will do so. If not, then we'll probably just forget about that one. But for now, all that remains for me to say is as always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now. <laughs>